So hello, um, I'm Matt Venn and this is Vladimir. Vladimir is also applied to be on the shuttle. So Vladimir, could you just tell us a little bit about yourself? So hi, I'm, uh, I'm Vladimir Milovanovic. So I'm coming from Serbia. Uh, I did uh, my PhD in electrical engineering some 10 years ago uh, in Delft in the Netherlands. I graduated uh, my uh, master's studies from the University of Belgrade here in Serbia. Then I spent some uh, time in Vienna, in Austria, three years postdoc, and then I uh, spent uh, almost two years in Berkeley, in California, at UC Berkeley. Then I came back uh, in Serbia, and now I'm a principal engineer at one uh, local company, Novelik, it's called, and I'm also an assistant professor at the University of Kragovac. Cool. Um, and what made you excited to apply to um, join the shuttle? Have you done an ASIC before? Yeah, so during my uh, uh, doctoral studies and postdoctoral studies, I, uh, I, specialized, I specialized in IC design with uh, several tape outs. So I did it uh, before, but I was also uh, always eager uh, regarding uh, uh, open source uh, software, open hardware and, and stuff. And then I heard about uh, this project uh, even before uh, Tim Anzel's talk. Uh, my, my former advisor from UC Berkeley actually pointed it out uh, just several days uh, before uh, end of June when, when, uh, when Tim gave his talk about uh, uh, Skywater, Open PDK. To be honest, I didn't hear about that foundry uh, beforehand, but then afterwards I, I heard it's, uh, it's a former Cypress uh, foundry and uh, I was interested uh, to, to proceed to participate in that. Here I'm leading a small digital design team. So we decided to, to, send, to try to send some of our designs through this open uh, source uh, tool flow and, and uh, hopefully produce some chips. And you're um, doing a spectrometer, is that right? Uh, exactly. So, so the company that uh, I'm working uh, for part-time uh, is actually specialized in, uh, radar, in radars. And they're doing all kinds of like radar modules, radar signal processing. And we wanted to do a, a, a radar signal processing backend, which uh, basically consists out of uh, FFT, fast Fourier uh, transform, and then a, 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 let's say, peak detector, like CIFAR or uh, whatever. But uh, since our CIFAR processor is, is, is not uh, really uh, well verified and tested, we decided to go just with, a, with an FFT. And then uh, it is pointless to call it the radar signal processor when it is just uh, an FFT. Uh, but we added some accumulator uh, uh, at the end of it and uh, we call it spectrometer. So basically we, we get some data and we can uh, make a, a, a spectrum out uh, to, to view its spectrum. So we do a fully pipelined uh, version of an FFT. So with uh, every sample coming in, to the FFT, we, we, we put out in a streaming fashion uh, each uh, uh, spectrum sample. So uh, real part and imaginary part, and then we, we make a magnitude out of it. We can do square magnitude, normal magnitude, log two magnitude. And then we have a, 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 an accumulator that accumulates those spectra that are coming out of the FFT. And we are basically trying to send that. We have a small built-in self-test uh, beforehand, we are we can generate some uh, sine waves. We can uh, uh, generate some frequency and uh, phase modulated some sine waves, just in order to test uh, the spectrometer uh, that it works fine even without uh, ADC or or whatever. So yeah, I was going to ask, how are you getting the signals in and out? Are you doing that through the um, the like the Pico RV on there, like with the wishbone bus, or are you taking raw data in and out over the GPIOs? Yeah, so we have actually three ways uh, how we can uh, get in the data. So first, we have a dedicated, besides the Caravel uh, UART, we have our own UART transmitter and receiver. So with the transmitter, we can send the, the data out of the accumulator and every particular block in this chain. And uh, with, the, with your uh, receiver, we can uh, uh, receive the data from outside, from the PC, and pump it in into our system. That's one way. The other way is we have 8-bit parallel input and 8-bit parallel output. 
uh, with 8 bit parallel output, we, we hope to be able to send the parallel data output to FPGA and also receive parallel data input from FPGA. And then we convert it to 32 bits because our uh, XE stream, XE4 stream bus is 32 bit one. So uh, those are two ways. And the third way how we pump data in is actually we, we have a built-in uh, self-test which generates the sine wave based on which we know, uh, because if we produce a simple a sine wave, we are going to get a single peak in the, in the spectrum. And therefore we know what to expect at the output. The, the built-in self-test you're talking about. Yes. Okay, so and um, a couple of other things I wanted to touch on. One was, um, so this, you're not writing in Verilog, you're uh, using Chisel, is that correct? Exactly. So we are, we are uh, the, the whole digital signal processing chain is actually uh, written in Chisel, uh, which is a hardware design language, which is especially good <clears throat> for making design generators, so rather than, than design instances. For example, I bet that's uh, useful for an FFT. Exactly, exactly. It's, it's very useful, but not only for an FFT. It's uh, useful for, let's say, plethora of, of other blocks. So with FFT, we can easily change the, let's say, uh, a bit width. The, the, then we can, maybe, maybe I can share the FFT uh, part and then show, show it uh, exactly on the screen. Okay. So let me try to share the Firefox. Okay, this is, this is, this is a page regarding Chisel. So this is, this is our uh, GitHub uh, repo, uh, which is uh, a fork of, of Caravel. We call it Spectravel. And uh, like since Caravel is a ship, we have some cargo uh, in, in that ship. And uh, uh, there we have uh, sub-modules. So since uh, we are attaching our uh, spectrometer via uh, XC4 bus, we have a wishbone to XC uh, converter which is from a zip CPU, a nice, a nice IP core, but everything we developed is, is here uh, in, in spectrometer. And uh, we have uh, a chain of, of generators. Here we have a piecewise linear uh, waveform uh, or function generator, which uh, comes to a numerically controlled oscillator, which comes to a, a single path delay feedback uh, FFT, which goes to uh, log mag, uh, max, uh, which uh, computes the magnitude, and uh, to accumulator, which does the accumulation. And when we talk about FFT, uh, this is uh, say how it uh, looks like. Uh, it's, it's basically Chisel is a, is a domain specific language embedded in Scala. So that's why we have uh, almost 100% here Scala code. And uh, here are some uh, descriptions regarding this chisel generator. It can generate both radix uh, two squared, uh, radix uh, two uh, uh, variants. Uh, we can, uh, uh, this, is, this is a sim uh, simple stage, uh, single stage. Uh, everything that is in red is a parameter. So we can uh, parameterize the bus. So we can uh, have APB, AHB, XE4 or tile link. We use XE4 simply for the reason that we have a wishbone to XE4 uh, bus uh, converter. Then uh, we can say, uh, it, is it going to be a decimation in time or decimation in frequency? Uh, if we are going to use SRAM cells uh, or shift registers, or block RAM cells, cells if we are uh, synthesizing it in FPGA. Every complex multiplication can be implemented either with three or four real multipliers. That is another uh, parameter. Uh, real and imaginary part data width is, is also programmable. Number of stages is programmable. And then uh, we, can, we can obtain some, some nice agile design space exploration. For example, we can uh, tweak the, the, the rounding algorithms after every, every stage and uh, we can get like uh, uh, several dB difference uh, just changing this uh, thing. And this is the number of stages. So this, this is 1024 points of FFT and this is let's say uh, 64 points FFT. So that's why uh, uh, basically we want to fit the largest possible design to, to, to the caravel uh, that we can. 
So right now, uh, the, the GDS that you're going to see is for a 64 point uh, uh, FFT. Uh, we are not using uh, SRAM cells because they are perhaps not uh, that uh, ready. I don't know whether other guys are, are using fully, Yeah, there's a few other people using them. But, oh, yeah. right. but also they're very big though. Yeah. So let me just interrupt and ask a couple of um, specific questions about the your strategy to head towards ASIC. So it looks like from the block diagram, um, mm -hmm. you're used to taking into account um, FPGA resources like block RAMs and hard multipliers. For targeting ASIC, are you Kind of, are you just synthesizing the whole thing into one big Verilog file and then dropping that into open lake? Or are you splitting exactly. this up into smaller modules? Exactly. That's, that's, the, that's the whole point of Chisel. So uh, how Chisel works is once it compiles, uh, once you set up these parameters, it spits out the, the synthesizable Verilog uh, code, which is uh, more or less human readable. Uh, and that is an instance, that is a single instance. We set up these parameters, we produce this instance out of the whole uh, spectrometer uh, and also the particular uh, sub-modules of, of it. And I then you put that into open lane and get your exactly. macro out. Maybe you can show us that now. So the, 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 the GDS, uh, let me uh, stop sharing uh, this thing and uh, share the K layout. So this is, this is the GDS, uh, this is the output of uh, open lane. Once we uh, uh, feed it with, with the Verilog that is pop, basically we generate the Verilog from Chisel. We uh, instantiate it together with the wishbone to axi uh, pass. We, we add some uh, other blocks. We put it in a user project uh, wrapper and uh, put, push it through open lane. And this is, so this, the get. size of what you've got on the screen now is the entire size of the space exactly. that we have on the ASIC, right? So exactly. you've got a little bit more room, but not that much more. Uh, actually, the density here is not okay, uh, yeah. that high. But you so see how the, de the density of the standard cells is low, but the density of the wiring is high. That's true. That's true. So uh, we now, what we want to do right now is to have a fully DRC clean design. It is LVS clean all, already. It has several antenna uh, violations and it has some DRC errors. Once we make it cl fully clean, uh, 64 point uh, FFT, 64 point sp spectrometer, we'll just spit out a larger version, 128 points out of the chisel generator and we'll try to, to push that through. So and basically we'll, we'll uh, send the design that is uh, the maximum design we can fit without the RC violations that we, we can push through open lane. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, do you mind uh, stop sharing your screen? Yeah. And um, for people that are interested to find out more or get in contact with you, what's the best way of people getting in contact? Well, they can contact me uh, on my uh, email, on uh, company's email. They can write me as you have uh, written me on Slack channel, uh, Skywater. And uh, yeah, that's, that's basically it. My email is uh, uh, Vlada, it's V-L-A-D-A -A at uh, kg.ac.rs. This KG is from uh, Kragujevac, this AC is from Academic, and this RS is from uh, Republic of Serbia. <laughs> so. Cool. <laughs> okay, well, thanks very much for your time, Vladimir. It's been really cool um, talking and finding out about your project. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Thank you for being interested in, in our pro project and wish you all the best uh, in, uh, for your project as well. Yeah, we'll see what happens in, um, when we get the chips back, see how many yeah. work. Yeah, bye.